So, so the idea is right. Any sufficiently advanced civilization would create, could create a simulation that's like our existence, and so the theory follows that may, maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Are we? <laughs> are we? Even I, in hot tubs. To know. So are much so it has to be banned from a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not the sexiest conversation. Are we in? Are we in? Um, the, 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 I mean, I think here's, in my mind, like the, the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that, that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have you know, virtual reality, have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in, indistinguishable. Um, even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no, there's a one in billions chance that this is based reality. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, guess. This, that seems to be like clearly what it, what it suggests, right. and and actually, I mean, arguably, we should hope that that's true, because otherwise, if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation, because otherwise, so they could reboot it. E either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options. The subject of this speech is a topic which has been discovered recently and which may not exist at all. I, in my stories and novels, often write about counterfeit worlds, inhabited often by just one person, while meantime, the other characters either remain in their own worlds throughout or are somehow drawn into one of the peculiar ones. This theme occurs in the corpus of my 27 years of writing. At no time did I have a theoretical or conscious explanation for my preoccupation with these pluriform pseudo-worlds. What I was sensing was the manifold of partially actualized realities lying tangent to what evidently is the most actualized one, the one which the majority of us, by consensus gentium, agree on. People claim to remember past lives. I claim to remember a different, very different present life. I know of no one who has ever made this claim before, but I rather suspect that my experience is not unique. What perhaps is unique is the fact that I am willing to talk about it. We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present, deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words, I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. You are free to believe me or to disbelieve, but please take my word on it that I am not joking. This is very serious, a matter of importance.